Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Kamal Sudhu. So today we are going to discuss an important topic of uh, economics, which is the marginal productivity theory of wages. The marginal productivity theory of wages is basically based on marginal product of labor, that is MPL. So it is also known as the labor price wage theory and it was uh, given by J.B. Clark. Let's discuss this concept with this example. Suppose five laborers produce 20 items and if we increase the labor force to seven, then se seven laborers will now produce 25 items. So in this case, the marginal labor is two and the marginal product of labor is five. So with applying two more laborers, there will be a production of five more items. So this is the concept on which this theory of uh, marginal productivity of wages works. Before discussing this theory in detail, let's discuss the assumptions of this theory. The aim of the firm is profit maximization. Then there is perfect competition in the market and law of variable proportion is operating. The theory also assumes that all the laborers are homogeneous and there is labor mobility in the market. That is free movement of labor. It also assumes that all the resources are fully employed. The criticism of marginal productivity theory of labor is also due to these assumptions. So before determination of wages by using this theory, let's discuss the three main components of uh, marginal productivity theory of wages. These are marginal physical product of labor and the second is value of marginal product of labor and marginal a revenue product of labor. We can say that marginal physical product of labor is basically the product that is uh, produced by the labor. And the value of marginal product of labor is basically money value of that uh, produced product. The third component that is marginal revenue of, of uh, product of labor is the change in existing revenue due to marginal productivity. So this theory states that value of marginal product of labor should be equal to the wage and similarly the wage should be equal to the marginal revenue of product of labor. So VMPL is equal to wages is equal to MRPL. So this is what the theory states. Now let's determine the wage rate by using this theory of marginal productivity of wages. As we know that the wage rate is determined when the demand and supply interact with each other. Here demand of labor is based on the value of the labor. So in this case the demand is the value of marginal product of labor that is VMPL. And we have also assumed that uh, there is perfect competition. So the demand of labor is equal to VMPL is equal to MRPL. So the demand curve uh, will be downward. The downward slope is due to the diminishing marginal returns. Now in case of uh, supply, the supply is equal to the average cost. Uh, this is also due to the assumption of perfect competition. So we can say that SL is equal to ACL is equal to MCL, which is the marginal cost of labor. The supply will be a straight line as a wage rate is fixed, uh, which is the case of uh, again perfect competition as we have assumed. The point E is the equilibrium point which states that uh, on uh, W wages, OC quantity of labor will be employed. This is shown in the graph. Then similarly, the graph also shows that if wage increases, the labor quantity will be decreased which is shown by OPQR in the graph. Then in another case, if we increase the, uh, sorry, in another case, if we decrease the wages, the labor quantity will increase, which is shown uh, by OABC. So following this process, the wage rate can be easily determined. So this was all in today's lecture session. So do like, share and subscribe my channel for easy, simple and precise lecture sessions related to BBA, BCom, MBA, MCom and current business environment related topics. Thank you.